Hi, I'm James Ede at the Ede Foundation, but you can call me Jim. Uh, the Ede Foundation is dedicated to creating chess liter uh, literacy and chess excellence. Um, and we are part partly involved in creating communities, communities through chess, because if you're part of a community, you're never alone. So our foundation has programs in uh, Zambia, Uganda, South Africa, Nicaragua, and we were just getting started between, before this pandemic helped kind of um, shut everybody down. We also do things from uh, the East Coast of the United States to the West Coast of the United States. So the foundation has been um, doing as much as we can to promote chess, chess excellence, and chess literacy. Uh, and I want to say that um, I have been honored to um, get a sponsor now. And you can see what I'm promoting my channel. Uh, but uh, right there is the Family Dollar Store. It's um, type in uh, fbds.dollarstore in Google or whatever, and you will find um, a wonderful page and use the discount code CHESS. And I will just show you a little bit of what you will be able to uh, purchase. And this is a, a dollar store home screen. And what you can do is buy um, quality products at inexpensive prices. And the dollar store has been a wonderful, I have many, many products, including face masks. You can get all sorts of things. There's a lot of beauty products, toys for kids, you know, and, and in the pandemic, we've, we've had our kids at home. We have to uh, keep them entertained. There's many, many things that you can uh, do with the uh, bought, purchase at the dollar store. And if you use the discount code CHESS, you'll also be supporting the Eid Foundation. And uh, I don't have to tell you that I would appreciate that. So go to the dollar store and uh, use the discount code CHESS and you will be able to um, find pretty much everything you need. And it's shipped right to your door. That's the best part of it. You don't have to go out. You don't have to go shopping. Uh, you can go shopping online, have it delivered to you. And my experience is that the, these prices are uh, very, very reasonable, affordable, and um, the kind of thing that you uh, won't get beat. And you'll, you'll, you'll enjoy it, and as I have, and I encourage you to do it, use the discount code CHESS. Now, this is the CHESS files. The answers are out there. And today I have a guest, a wonderful guest, that I would like to introduce to you, Elizabeth Shaughnessy from the Berkeley Chess School. Hello, Elizabeth. Thank you for hi, joining. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi. And, and uh, I've got to start with um, the basic reporter questions, uh, interview questions of um, where were you born, where do you live now, and how did you get started in chess? So where were you born? Uh, I was born in Dublin, Ireland. And... Uh, to my delight, I inherited that house when my mother uh, died, my father uh, predeceased her, and uh, I still have it. So uh, I didn't sell it, and uh, so it's a it's a place I can go to, and I do uh, often in the summer. And it's also uh, Dublin is sort of a, a jumping off place for Europe. So we, my family and my my kids and myself, yes. are there and. Uh, so that's where I was born in, in, in Dublin, Ireland. I came to this country when I was, uh, well, I, I met my, 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 the man who became my husband met me in Ireland, in Dublin. And uh, uh, we fell in love, I suppose. And so we got married and we had three children. And uh, I came to the United States in, in 1970, which is a long time ago now. And yes. uh, yeah, and uh, got married and had kids and, um, uh, at that stage, I was uh, I was working as an architect. I I, I am trained, uh, oh, yeah. qualified as right. an architect, and uh, so I came and um, I worked as an architect here until I had my children. And then, uh, as with most women, uh, sort of the life of raising children took over, and um, and uh, in the process of that, uh, uh, I the, the elementary school to which my children went. These two of my children, two of my three children were in it. The third was still a baby at home. Uh, I, we were asked, we at the PTA, the parents were asked to do something after school for kids. In those days, there was no, there were no after school programs at all of any sort. Right. Um, and so we were. I remember asked, well. I thought, well, the only thing I can do is chess. 
So I offered chess and uh, I, ex I got, um, I remember uh, six boards and sets and was all ready to, to do it and expected a small number of children. And frankly, to my shame, I expected all boys. And so up I went. 72 children showed up and they were literally half girls and half boys. And uh, we, me with my six boards, it was quite a challenge. Uh, but I, and that first day, I remember the parents came too to see see what was happening, and here I was with six boards and seventy two kids. <laughs> yeah, it was quite yeah. a challenge. So, yeah. uh, so I escaped that one, and um, uh, I divided it in two. So I went up, went to the school two days a week. Uh, that was thirty six kids to a class, and I could handle that. And I, I remember going to the, I think it was the charitable foundation of the United States Chess Federation, and saying. Set some boards. And U.S. Chess Trust, yes. U.S. Chess Trust, right? That was it. Right. Uh, and they they gave me, I remember, paper boards, but that was fine. Anything was better yes. than no boards, right? That's right. And, and the sets, and and we we struggled that way, and um, and uh, that that was a terrific help at the time. And then, uh, then I went to the Berkeley Chess Club, which was a, cl uh, a club in which I was actively playing at the time. Still am, by the way. But um, they, uh, I asked if anybody would volunteer to teach. Other days, uh, more and more uh, schools were asking for it in Berkeley. The word had gotten out. And right. of course, all this was free then. I was the mother of kids and the thing, and it was free. Um, and the uh, chess players, whether it's to their credit or not, actually, without what they did, I wouldn't have started this organization at all. They said, no, we, no, we need to be paid. So I thought, oh, okay, well, if you're paid, will you go on and teach? And they said, sure. Yeah. So then I went back to the PTA and said, uh, how about how about paying? And they said, no, no, we'll pay for our children, but you know, we're not going to give it like, like that. So I thought, okay, well, if, if I charge a little more for their children, I'll be able to afford to give it to those who can't, who can't um, afford it. So that's how this program, the Berkeley Chess School, started. And it was unique as a, you pay for your instruction. It was unique. Um, yes. Nobody else was doing this. There were, there were very good people like um, Stephen Philadelphia, I forget his last name, that I was on the board with. Yes, um, shut. Steve Shutt, Shutt. Yeah. yeah, he is terrific. Lots of terrific teachers and oh, absolutely. dads around yeah. the country uh, teaching yeah. their kids. They weren't paid. Nobody was paid, and it was right. it was uh, after even after Bobby Fisher uh, at the time. Uh, so, and he had he he had um, put money into chess by demanding that he gets a, a reasonable amount for being world champion. So, but right. anyway, it was nobody was doing this, but I was forced into doing it. If if so, I didn't start this organization which now by the way is celebrating its 40th anniversary and we teach um we teach uh, 7000 pre covid we taught 7000 kids kids a year uh, so it's grown somewhat to put it mildly yes. but i started off, i didn't start off thinking oh i'll build a, a a program no i started off struggling to try and offer chess because there was such a demand for it to my surprise yes. i was yes. also surprised Again, to my shame, I suppose not just the girls showed up, but that all ethnicities had chess at home. And I didn't know that because chess, compared with Europe, chess in the United States was pathetic. I unpopular. Mean, yeah. Um, unpopular. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just uh, it's changed. It's it's really changed. But uh, it's changed I, I, so I, dramatically. But I didn't know all of this stuff about you in the past because, you know, this is the first time I'm meeting you. Hey, this, my producer is just messing with me. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Oh, we have met before. I'll stop that. I it makes me look bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my producer and I don't get along very well. But, um, yes, so I've known you for a long time. I've known some of the accomplishments that you've, you've done. But I want our viewing audience, hi, Mom, to uh, uh, know a little bit more about this. So you, you were born in Ireland. And if I'm not mistaken, didn't you represent Ireland in the Olympiad or two? Seven. Seven. I, seven. Yeah. Seven, seven. Olympiads. Yes. Yeah. 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 And the so, interesting, the interesting thing about that was I played my first before I came to the United States. It was in Lublin in Poland, and in those days it was they had women's Olympiads and men's Olympiad on different right. years. 
And right. I, it was a women's Olympiad in Lublin in Poland. And then I came to the United States and had babies and stopped uh, playing, really, and stopped uh, having anything to do with it. Uh, at, at age 60, as I recall, uh, I, uh, I was back in Ireland and a friend said, hey, why don't you ask? I said, well, I can't. I live in the United States. No, 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 you can. You're, you're. So I did. And the next one I played in, uh, amazingly, was that one in Eliste, Kalmykia. Uh -huh. where they built Chess City and it was yes. it was being built as we waited for the first day because it wasn't quite finished. Ready, right? Yes. That was <laughs> it's like second. a California project, yeah. <laughs> Not quite done. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So that was uh, that was um yeah, so that was just my the other times that we, we met, if you can see over my shoulder there, do you remember this tournament? Do, can you identify that person next to me? Oh, Irina, she is such a great person. She is such a nice, nice woman. I really like yes. her. Yes. And seven times U.S. champion. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, apart from being a nice woman, she's an amazing player, of course. Yes. And the only, yes. the only woman GM in the United States. As I and you had her at your tournament. Yes, it's kind enough. Uh, we, um, well, I got it into my head that, um, that, <laughs> and I suppose I wasn't unique here, that women weren't sufficiently um, served or, or respected in chess and that uh, there's a women, woman GM and there's nothing wrong with that and a woman IM and a woman uh, master, nothing wrong with that, all, all needing lesser um, lesser rating than the men, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but I thought, well, I mean, there are women, a lot of women, who are uh, deserving of having the, the same standing as the men, but there's no opportunity for them to achieve this uh, on their own in, in any women's context. So I thought, well, let's have, instead of a um, an international master um, norm tournament for uh, that anybody can play in, or a women's international norm tournament. Let's have a, a regular international norm tournament for just women. And it was um, I, I came up with the idea, and uh, as with all of my, yeah, I, a lot of my ideas, everybody said, "No, can't do it. You can't do it. Simply can't do it. It's so expensive. It's this. You have to pay people. You won't get the people. You." On and yeah, on. that <laughs> common, yes, yes, so the naysayers. Nothing yes. ventured, nothing gained. So let's yes, try. Absolutely. You know? yes. And I went to Jim Ead and I said, you know, I need some money to to run this because it's it is quite expensive, and I'm hoping that Irina Crush, who as uh, who came to Berkeley when she uh, to a Norm tournament which uh, we sponsored. Um, uh, in uh, in our premises, then our rented premises, then in Berkeley, as uh, it was an international norm tournament, and she played in that. And when she did, she uh, taught for us in our summer camp, and she uh, she also did simuls for us as a younger, a young. She was a woman then, but she was young, uh, very young. I'd say she was college age. So I knew her from then. And I said, you know, she's very nice. I mean, she's, uh, I could ask her, oh, yeah. but she's yeah. going to be expensive. And you, to your credit, said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll support that. So yeah, we supported uh, it through the U.S. Trust Trust. Uh, yeah, I made a yeah. donation to them to support that. Right. But, um, yeah, because that's one of the missions of the trust as well is to help these types of things. But it's people like you that make it happen. And it, you know, I, yeah. it's one of the many projects that we've worked on because as I got involved in chess organizations at the state, national and international level, you know, I just about burned out and had had enough and you were, you kind of took over about the same time I was getting out, you were getting in. <laughs> <laughs> so you were president of Cal chess. You were on the executive board of the U S chess, the national governing organization for chess. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so it, it, the question really is, the easiest way to ask this question is, what haven't you done in chess? Oh, gosh. I, <laughs> well, I tell you, my, my own efforts at being a chess player uh, have suffered. Of course, you know, it's also, as I, I saw you say on in one, another one of your programs, chess is for the young, and it's absolutely true in one sense. Uh, so I'll never be a master, let alone a grandmaster. Um, right. 
uh, I won't say I probably never would have because nothing ventured, nothing gained, but I was right. busy doing something else, yes. um, which is the Berkeley Chess School. But uh, yeah, so uh, so yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about the Berkeley Chess School because the fact is this is a bricks and mortar school. This is not just a um, in in the schools after the school day program. This is you have your own building, a dedicated building. And I can think of like the Mechanics Institute, the Marshall, and uh, what Rex Sinkfeld has done in St. Louis is remarkable, but there just aren't that many buildings dedicated to chess. Yeah. And how did you pull that off? How did you, how did you come up with the idea how did you make it happen? Tell me a little bit about that. As, as usual with my insane ideas, and everybody thought it couldn't be done. I mean, everybody thought you couldn't charge for chess when I, when I started off. No, nobody will pay. And I was paying fees for my children to do everything else. Why not pay, pay for chess? So again, nothing ventured, nothing gained. It worked. And the, uh, the brick and mortar, again, it can't be done. This won't happen. How can it be done? You have no money. You're not making any money, so on. But of course, I thought, well, uh, first of all, the, there was a strong feeling, an impetus I had, is, yeah, I love chess. Yeah. And I, I sort of felt chess has always been played in the basement of churches or somewhere where... That's how I got started. Where yeah. You're sort of uh, there at the behest, uh, I mean, as, as a charitable organization, you know, people are giving you this space and when it doesn't suit them out to go and you try to find another space and it is just outrageous the way it is. And I thought that is not right. There should be, the chess should have its own buildings. Um, so I thought, well, what's the harm in trying? And so I must confess it has taken, uh, this is our 40th year, uh, it has taken 35 years of holding, um, uh, holding, you know, uh, fundraisers to raise money for a building and people to give us the money. And so we gradually got it together, but uh, but we didn't have enough and we never had enough. And you'd go no, of course not. real estate agents and they'd say, oh, you need so much down. You need 50% uh, 50, uh, 50 down as a non-profit. Uh, if you weren't a non-profit, you wouldn't need that much. But as a non-profit, you need, well, we kept not having 50%. And as time went on, the 50% went up and, we, and it was yeah. really quite quite something. But, <clears throat> uh, I, I, um, but I was determined we're going to get it. Well, an employee of mine anyway was passing a building one day and, and a, a handwritten note was up on the building saying for sale by owner. And it was a black church. And I thought, a church? Well, they have to have a, a, a playing hall. They have to have yeah, a hall. Right. And that would work. So that might work. So let's talk with him. So I I, I went down. The, the building was in appalling state, I must say, just terrible state. But there it was. And it had a big hall and it had other rooms and it, uh, it had the space outside. And it, I thought, you know, we'll never be able to afford something really nice. So let's try and make this into something really nice and we can do it over time. Uh, yes. so, uh, so I came to an agreement with that bishop, and and uh, there is a there's a non profit um, organization that gives money for for buildings to non profits, and they and between the the bishop and we managed to get it, and we are pay we were paying less in mortgage than we were paying in rent when when that was done. So, you know, it was a win-win situation. We we own our building. We don't. We have a mortgage. We don't own it, you know. But, you know, I don't own my house either. The bank owns it. But, you know, I, there's a mortgage. So, but we own it. It's ours. And, yes. we can, for example, uh, we, we can stay until midnight if the games are still going till midnight now in right. some of churches or uh, rooms mm -hmm. and pools. You can't do that. You're always behest of somebody else's or uh, schedule so um so that's how it came about and uh it's amazing and we're still struggling it was we had to get asbestos removed we had to get a new roof i mean we 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 discovered only last year that our store was going through somebody else's property they wanted to build on their property they said you know you have to get it out of here we had to build a store going forward and that's very expensive yeah. i mean it, it any any up. homeowner knows the, these things. It <laughs> no, never right, ends. Right. Never exactly ends. Yep. What it is. Yep. Well, right now also we are yes because um, because of the new store we had to take down the ramp that was there. Oh, for the disabled. So the, they could yeah. 
put in the circuit. The ramp was not up to code, and so we couldn't build the same ramp again, and there wasn't space to build a code ramp, so we have to build, a, and you have to bring an elevator. Well, elevators are expensive. Very, uh, yes. you have, if you have an elevator, you have to have a, a, an entryway to put the elevator in. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're building right now, and we're raising money right now, and anybody who wants to give, please do, uh, for our elevator. In fact, we have raised uh, almost $500,000 for a six hundred thousand, well, it was a five hundred thousand dollar project, I thought, and now the city of Berkeley said, "Oh no, you have to have a sprinkler system. Sprinkler system, oh, hundred thousand dollars." I hate to talk about this on your show. It's it's all right. All right. No, these are, these are these. This makes it yeah. so much more in, impossible that you pulled this off. You know, <laughs> just this background of all the things that you've had to do, yet you've done it. Right. I, so you know, a tip of that cap to you, yeah. Elizabeth yeah. Shaughnessy, yeah. and I, I do, I do say, um, <clears throat> you know, that it started with your your desire to do it, and then you had to show the initiative, and then you had to persevere because there were so many obstacles in your way that you had to overcome. Yeah. So this is this is if someone's watching out here and thinking that you can't do it, you can. It can be done. Right. So yeah, and she's an example of someone who's done it. So I say, the answers are out there. The answers yes. are out there. Yeah. yeah. You just have to believe, believe that they can be done. Now, you know, there are occasions that where things can't be done, but there's, there's absolutely no harm in trying and failing either. No harm yes. at all. Yeah. yeah. Just pick yeah. yourself up, brush yourself off and keep going yeah. forward. Yeah. 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 Uh, Absolutely. Now, you know, w when you were born in Ireland and you came to the United States in 1970, was it in Berkeley that you came to? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So my, that my, was a trying. That was a trying time in this country, 1970, and especially in Berkeley. So, was there a culture shock for you when you came first came over? No. Uh, no, there wasn't. Uh, one of the things I remember loving about Berkeley was, uh, so um, you could you could wear anything and nobody cared. I That's really true. loved that. Uh, you could be casual all the time. You didn't have to dress up for anything. No ties. Uh, and as uh, no ties, it was, it was very different from the culture I came from, uh, mm -hmm. all over Europe and including Ireland. Uh, you 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 know that that was great. It was a great freedom. It felt like. Yes. Um, I don't know that it was a difficult time. There wasn't a culture shock because, of course, every you know, everybody in the world knows what's going on. And and I'd been to the United States before in the 60s. Uh, mm -hmm. I was here in 64, 65. Now, that was uh, that was an even harder time in, in Berkeley mm -hmm. in the 70s, yes. or in, in, in California anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, there wasn't a particular culture shock. And I was lucky enough as an immigrant, Mr. Trump, uh, <laughs> to... Uh, to speak the language, so mm -hmm. you know, I, I spoke English, and that that helps enormously, of course. And and uh, you know, I got initially I got jobs in architectural firms. That was also very different uh, in Ireland and most of Europe, maybe still to this day. Um, they you get a job as an architect, you you join a firm, and you're in that firm for the rest of your life if you just yes. see. Here you join, you get a job in an architect's office for the project. At the end of the project, you're out of work. Yeah. I thought, this is incredible. The other thing was amazing to me was here I was a qualified architect uh, expecting to be paid and uh, appropriately. And I would be asked to make the coffee or answer the phone. Now, they'd be paying me what they pay to an architect, but I'd still, oh, of course, you're a woman and you answer the phone make the coffee of course i said no and it Good was, for you. I simply didn't get because uh i i wouldn't I said no i don't yeah. want to do that yeah <laughs> yeah not there's anything wrong with making coffee but it's just the of course the yeah. expectation is yeah. the expectation, is not, yeah. you're a woman therefore uh, that's yeah. not appropriate right yeah. and and so you you've also done something for you're a woman you can't be a good chess player so That's, did you see did you see the queen's gambit the netflix series yes i did wasn't it wonderful it was, yeah i, I enjoyed I really it enjoyed it yeah yes yeah, yeah yeah and so yeah but i love the scene where where she goes through her first tournament and she's unrated and the organ the um tournament directors are are like oh no you can't play in that open section oh no, no. Yeah. they take one look at her and say oh you're you know yeah. you'll get crushed <laughs> 
Thank you. Well, well it's, it's changed, of course, a, a bit too since I first started, but walk into a, a chess club and immediately somebody will come and offer to teach you how the pieces move. Immediately, because you're a woman. I mean, if a man walks in, they don't go up to him and say, I'll teach no. you how to pieces this room, you know. It's, I, got, yeah. I got transferred around a lot when I was starting my career. And so I was in new towns a lot, and I would always look up the local chess club, you know, and the, the, nobody came up to me and said, you know, hi, what's your name? Or, you know, anything yeah. like that. They said, what's your rating? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I, I think that the times have certainly changed. We have people like Irina Crush, who is setting an incredible example, seven times U.S. Women's Champion, yeah. um, a tremendous uh, individual as well. You know, when I was on uh, a treasurer of the U.S. chess, I would be writing the Sanford checks, you know, s signing that to, to her and to others that have won it. So there are programs out there that help these people um, get, if they want to achieve chess excellence, they can, they can get some help. You know, but what you're doing is is not just uh, I, I call it chess literacy, teaching people to read and write chess so that they can open the world of the chess literature can open up to them. You know, that's also good. But I think it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what you're doing is not trying to create the next greatest, uh, not the next Ma Magnus Carlsen, but you're trying to create people who are good citizens and the ability to think. And uh, I think that the chess is the tool that you're using to do that for young people. And it's a gift that you give them that lasts a lifetime. Absolutely, Jim. That absolutely describes um, my philosophy in, the, in our program, the Berkeley Chess School, is, is not to uh, the effort to send the best team to win the whatever. Um, it is to uh, develop critical thinking. All the things that chess gives, I or anybody who doesn't, chess does it. Chess has it all in itself. Uh, the, the, the discipline, the critical thinking, the um, uh, look before you leap, uh, yes. everything yes. we have and, postpone and, immediate and, gratification yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and don't they, move your queen out first yeah, yeah. <laughs> right right, right. <laughs> it's amazing what chess in and of itself can do and all all we're expected to do is bring it to them now there's little more to it than that you can't bring it to them uh, teaching them on day one here's how the pieces move and then here's the sicilian defense and right. learn this opening and you'll win your games or here are all the tricks you can do uh, you have to teach serious chess uh, in order to get children involved but you also have to make it fun and if you don't make it fun forget it it's they're not going to hang in there and we have three three grandmaster alumni three uh, which is really quite amazing. And Sam Shanklin, who's in the top 10 of the country, was also yep. the national champion. Um, yes. He's a super grandmaster, I suppose they're called these days. Uh, and our latest one uh, is, is just a, a boy. But um, it's, uh, but you don't have to, the, these children that we had, uh, and and Christopher Christopher Yu is coming up too. Is another. Oh example. my goodness! Yes, he's yeah. another example of if you make it fun, and if they, uh, and by the way, a lot of the chess of fun is in tactics. That's the fun of chess. So yeah. tactics, tactics, tactics. Oh, you know that's exciting. Uh, yeah. How to yeah. get the pawn to the other side? How to do two pawns against one pawn? That's not so exciting. It's not so interesting. It's not so much fun. So, but we did that. And out of that came these grandmasters. We didn't have to push them. We didn't have to do anything. They, they're there. It'll happen. If they're going to be grandmasters, they're going to be grandmasters or masters. They also may choose to be doctors or teachers or anything they want exactly. to be. They're better equipped because they've learned chess. The mind has developed more because they've learned chess. I don't think we would have the political situation we have in the, we're in the United States today if people had critical thinking skills and use them, we yeah. would have a, a, a better political situation than we have. So I think chess is an amazing, amazing tool. It's not just, it is a game. That's the other nice thing about it. The children have no, no, the, the schools we go into, some of the schools, these uh, Title I schools, the children have an aversion to, to learning. They have an aversion to education. They have no aversion to a game, none at all. Yeah. So you have them right in there learning all the skills, mathematical skills, all the STEM things. 
not even all of, a, happening all of a sudden you. they don't think the math tables are very difficult anymore they that's have the confidence right. that's right. you, yes. you built and the also, confidence they also learned to uh, listen to what the teacher has to say because they're not putting up any barriers against it so when they go back into their classroom they listen to what the teacher has to say and if you listen to the teacher you will learn so they do and and then they find out oh learning isn't so bad after all i mean and sitting to, still and thinking you know sitting still and thinking is a skill yeah that you teach absolutely, kids absolutely and for and children, it's directly it's transferable back into the classroom yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's but amazing. i think you're you're making a tremendous point about making it fun because you know when i was teaching chess in the schools it was like the kids felt like they were on recess they were playing they, you know and you're yeah. teaching them they didn't even know that how much they were learning That's and right. That's and right. it was we just know. wonderful to see their confidence yeah. grow. Yeah. And when, you know, we didn't tell them you have to be smart to play chess, but they thought if I can play chess, I must be smart. And these are kids that may not be getting a lot of support from their home but, environments or school environments. Yeah. People might be thinking, but, Yo, but, you, you don't have any potential or, or that kind of yeah. stuff. The messages they're getting were negative, yeah. but yeah. the chess gave them this confidence that they yeah. could accomplish yeah. something that people yeah. didn't think they could do. Yeah. And, and better still, perhaps their parents begin to look at them differently. Their teachers exactly. begin to look at them differently. Exactly. Oh, you're playing chess, you must have brains. Yes. Be smart. Yeah. Right. And so they treat them differently. They do. There I've seen that, it. Yeah. There aren't that many bad people in the world, but subconsciously, a lot of people do that towards women. A lot of very fine men do things towards women that are, are um, not appropriate and they don't even know. But, it, but if, if, if the, that is broken for the kids and so the teachers and the parents and the parents boast to, to their aunts about how their child is doing chess, the whole attitude towards the child changes. It's so true. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, I just think that this is a gift that we can't give to as many children as we've given it to, we want to give more. And yeah. I just have to tip my hat to you again because you had walked the talk, you've done it. You've done it for years, 40 years. So this is something that I um, really appreciate your efforts. And if it, how would people, if they want to donate to your program, your fantastic program, how would they go about it? How do they contact you? Uh, go on our website, berkeleychessschool.org, go to donate and you're in. And yeah. we really, would really appreciate it. Uh, this last struggle to try and get the money for the um, for the splinter, splinter system would just oh. be so welcome, so welcome. And then we could really open again. and. Um, and yeah, please, please yeah. do. If you have the capacity to do it, please do it. We'd appreciate it. And when you're you're doing chess in the schools, and I know this is all over the world now, especially I, I know people who have been doing wonderful things in the United States with the schools. Um, but during the pandemic, the schools are closed, so you don't have the opportunity to do your programs. So this is a financial impact on you as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Preventing Huge. you. From, from so you yeah. just trade water now, hoping that things get better and yeah. you can go back to doing what you do so well. Yeah, we did seven thousand kids a year before before um, before COVID. We're now doing at the most seven hundred. So okay. it's just it's just been a, a huge huge uh, hit. Uh, yeah. So anything you can would be absolutely wonderful. And, and that's Berkeley. Chess school dot org. Yeah, okay. and we're a nonprofit, so it's a, it's a tax deduction if that interests you. So yeah, yeah, five yeah. and and yeah. the the what the foundations and the not for profit like like the foundation, you know, in Berkeley Chess Schools. You know, we're not competitors; we're allies. We want to help each other. Oh gosh, yes. we have yeah. to we have to do it together. Yeah, and yeah. so you know. Um, uh, as impressive as your performance is and, and everybody, um, if you're doing it by yourself, you're only going to get so far. So reach out to other people that are doing what yeah. you're doing and yeah. uh, help everybody. You know, you never build yourself up by tearing someone else down. So not make it a competition between people who are delivering chess yeah. to yeah. children, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Your allies, you're not competitors. Yeah, I must say, in the Bay Area, most 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 of our organizations work together. Uh, I have a great uh, I have a great um, um, work relationship with Bay Area Chess, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the other big one in the area. And it's it's uh, it's it makes sense. It, it doesn't make sense yes. to try to to 
be to take from the other because there's there's enough schools in the Bay Area that a hundred programs couldn't serve all the children. So there's no need for this competition at all. It isn't like right. we're all fighting over 10 schools. We're not. You right. Know? So and that's that's terrific. Uh, so I must say say that of most most of the things in the Bay Area, I understand New York may not be quite like that, but we're we're doing well. I mean, there there are obviously exceptions, but on the whole, we're doing sure. pretty well supporting yeah. each other. Yeah. Well, it's great meeting you for the first time. Uh, my producer's messing with me again, but uh, I really want to tip my hat to you one final time, and I'm going to uh, have to close the show because you can't hear it, but there's a gong sounding in my ear that we're running out of time. But okay. you and I could talk forever, and uh, we have in the past, and we'll continue in the future. Thanks so much for being on my show, Elizabeth. Thanks for having me, Jim. I really enjoyed it. It was nice, casual, relaxed, wonderful. Thank you. Good. That's the way we want it. Okay. Bye-bye. All right, so that was uh, Elizabeth Shaughnessy of the Berkeley Chess School, berkeleychessschool.org if you want to donate, and uh, it's eFoundation.org if you want to donate to me because we help each other, and that's the point. We want to build the community, and if you're part of a community, you're never alone. So I also want to encourage you to, um, for my sponsor, the dollar store, the FBDS, Fort Bragg Dollar Store, fbds.dollarstore.com, uh, and use the discount code CHESS because that way you're helping uh, the dollar store who helps others and you're helping the E-Foundation who helps others. So be part of the team, help each other, and we'll all get through this together. And thank you for joining me. This has been a, the Chess Files. The answers are out there. And I am James Ede of the E-Foundation, but you can call me Jim.